today's cook, I'm gonna show you how I took my deep fryer to a whole new level. I deep fried every single meat and let me tell you something, some of them just blew my mind, others not so much. And my goal for this video is to show you that the deep fryer can be used for so many more things than just french fries. This is I cooked every meat in a deep fryer, so let's do it. And we're gonna start off with a beautiful Wagyu tomahawk steak. This is an Australian Wagyu marbling score 9. It is also 2.5 inches thick. And as you can tell, the marbling of the steak is incredible. This is one of the best beefs you can buy. Now I have deep fried some steaks before and they did turn out fantastic. However, every single one of them was thin. I've never actually tried a thick steak. But hey, that's gonna change today because we're gonna be deep frying this beautiful steak. One thing you gotta keep in mind is that Wagyu fat literally melts at room temperature. So whenever you deep frying a thin steak, it's no problem at all. But deep frying a two inches thick monster is something else. But hey, we're gonna find out right now how it's gonna turn out. And as you already know, the best treatment for a beautiful steak like this is to dry brine. And all that is is to season it with salt, put it on a cooling rack and set it on my refrigerator overnight. The very next day, this is what it looks like. As expected, the deep red color is a sign that the dry brine worked. To really try the beautiful flavor of this steak, I'm not gonna be adding any freshly ground black pepper or garlic powder. So with that being said, it is time for the deep fryer. I set my oil to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, threw my tomahawk in there and let it cook. Since this is a thick steak, you don't wanna cook it too fast, which also makes me very worried about the fat. Because as you saw me mentioning before, it melts at room temperature. To make sure it cooks evenly, I kept flipping the steak every 15 minutes. And to my surprise, it actually took one hour to reach an internal temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. And as I did, I quickly pulled that off and this is what I was left with. I know what you're thinking and that is an ugly steak. As you can see, I will say 75% of the fat has been completely melted. And it was right at this point I was like, oh my goodness, what have I done? Did I just destroy a beautiful Wagyu tomahawk steak? I'll tell you one thing, I almost slept myself. But before going any farther, the only way I was gonna find out is to slice it open. And once I did, this is what it looks like. The internal temperature was 135 degrees Fahrenheit, but that looks to me way lower. But as I continue slicing, I actually figured out what happened. This is a perfect steak for everyone in the family, because this is medium rare aka 135 degrees Fahrenheit. We also have some rare which is 120 degrees, but most importantly we have that crust and that is as crispy as it gets. But the most important thing is always the taste and as I took my first piece, check it out. I can't wait any longer and it's time to give it a try. And as I did, whoa, this is phenomenal. It is a wonderful steak. Oh my, I'm telling you right now, it is so crunchy, juicy. Yes, you can tell it's a Wagyu steak. Even though there's no salt and pepper, it is fantastic. I want to give it a try to the rare steak and see how that tastes. And as I did, oh my god, forget about it, this thing is amazing. Even a rare steak like this, it has a wonderful taste. To sum this up, deep frying a Wagyu tomahawk steak might not be the healthiest thing, but let me tell you something, it's a big thumbs up for me. Moving on to the next one and it is gonna be lobster tail. For this cook, I'll be using a Florida lobster tail. The great thing about it is that the tail part is much larger than the ones from Maine. And keep in mind that they also don't have any claws. The first thing I like to do is to cut the middle with some shears. This makes the job nice, easy and quick. Once that's done, you just gotta open up the shell and pull it all out. If you've never done it, it might look complicated to do, but it's easy. Anyone can do it, you just gotta have some patience. Now of course, since we're gonna deep fry it, the first thing we need to do is some seasoned flour. And for that, I threw in some all-purpose flour followed by cornmeal, a little bit of salt, black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and to finish it off, smoked paprika. Mix it well and your seasoned flour is done. Since the lobster is quite wet, there's no need to add any egg wash. Just add as much of the seasoned flour as you want and your lobster tail is ready for the deep fryer. And talking about that, I set my deep fryer to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and threw in my lobster. Now one tip I'm gonna give you is that you must hold it down for a second because if you don't, your lobster will curl up on you and make some weird shapes. Just hold it until the shell is completely set and you're ready to release. The goal is to cook until an internal temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And as it was cooking, I decided to make a quick dipping sauce for it. And here's how. I started with mayo, followed by sweet chili sauce, a little bit of garlic paste, mix it well and your sauce is done. This is what's known as bang bang sauce. It's normally used for shrimp, but today we're gonna use for lobster. So in the end, I guess you can call it where I'm making bang bang lobster. And by this time, as I was done with my dipping sauce, my lobster was also ready. That, my friends, is a deep fried lobster. Or you can also call it a piece of art. 
because the interesting thing is you can shape it however you want. But hey, regardless of how cool it actually looks, the most important thing is always how is it gonna taste. And as I grabbed my knife and I took my first piece, and check that out, that is a thick piece of lobster. And I don't know if it's coming through the camera, but it's perfectly cooked. But I mean, this piece is even too large for me. But it goes to show you how easy it is to serve lobster like this for your guests or yourself. So I went ahead and got a more manageable piece. And as I take my first bite, what? That is amazing. That is how lobster should be cooked. Forget about steaming your lobster. And don't get me started on boiling it. This is how lobster should be served. But there's one thing left to do and that's to try it with the sauce. And as I pour my sauce on top and I took a bite, what? Yes, it is so good. Saying that this is delicious is a complete understatement. I'm pretty sure you had bang bang sauce before and if you didn't, you should. Because having it with your lobster is a life-changing experience. To sum it all up, deep fry your lobsters. You will not regret it. Now let's talk about duck. And I'm talking about wonderful tasty duck. Yes, this one is gonna blow your mind just like it did mine. And of course, I am going to be using duck breast. If you've never cooked duck breast before, one of the things that is fantastic about it is the skin. It is hard to resist that crispiness that comes from the skin. Before that skin can even think about getting crispy, you must render all that fat. And if you try to do that directly on the deep fryer, it will overcook the duck. And as you already might know, duck breast needs to be served medium rare. That is how I like my duck. So first, I'm going to be rendering all of this fat. But everything always starts with the seasoning. And for this duck breast, I kept it really simple with only salt nothing else and that's only because I'm gonna be deep frying it in the end making a wonderful seasoned flour to render the fat I set my pan to low heat using a non-stick pan I threw in my duck breast to make sure all of the skin had contact with the pan I used the weight and that's perfect because it presses down on the skin and let it renders evenly and here's where your patient is gonna pay off you want to do this nice and slow because the last thing you want is for your skin to burn and your fat not to render so let it take its time and do its thing and after about five minutes I removed the press and it was time to flip and once I did, look at that. This is what I'm talking about. Perfectly rendered and crispy duck skin. And as you can see, the other side is still completely raw. But the skin is basically what duck dreams are made out of. Now as it cools down, I decided to make my seasoned flour. And for that, I started with all-purpose flour followed by Guga's rub. Mix it well and your seasoned flour is ready. Now you want to pat it down real good to make sure there's no excess oil. Throw it in your seasoned flour and make sure every single edge is coated. And to be honest with you, you can just finish right here and deep fry this thing just as is. But we want to take that to the next level and that's to add breadcrumbs. To be specific, I'm adding panko because I think it's a lot better. I'm using the traditional method that you bread fry anything. And that's to go from the seasoned flour to the egg wash and directly into the breadcrumbs. The only thing you gotta keep in mind is to make sure every single edge is coated. Because in the end, we want a nice crispy duck breast. Talking about that, it is time for the deep frying and I set mine to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Threw in my duck breast in there and let it cook until I reach an internal temperature of 135. As it was cooking, of course I decided to make a simple sauce to go along with it. So I started with strawberry jam, followed by garlic paste, ginger paste, soy sauce, white vinegar, and finish it off with chili oil. Now all there's left to do is mix it well and your duck sauce is done. And that is how you make a fast, quick duck sauce. Because you know you gotta always make your duck sauce so that you don't make Gordon Ramsay angry. That's the last thing you want. And once I was done with the sauce, so was my duck breast. As I'm removing them, you can see that the breadcrumbs are perfectly golden brown and I present to you the deep fried duck breast. I mean just by looking at this you can already tell that this crispiness is next level. But of course we gotta go in for the slice and once I did look at that. Perfectly medium rare just the way I like it. This is how duck breast should be eaten. Yes there's still a little bit of pink but that is what makes it good. But as I take my first piece you can see that it's perfectly cooked and I can't no longer wait for my first bite. And as I did what? This is duck breast to the next level. It is so flavorful and the crunchiness is fantastic of course i gotta give it a try with the sauce and as i put my sauce oh come on all right let's try this with the sauce <laughs> i mean this is so good that i gotta try something because we all know that anything that goes in a taco is 10 times better so i made some mini tacos put some sauce on it and i threw a little bit of parsley in and take a look at this i urge you to give this a try because let me tell you something it was awesome and i definitely recommend you giving this one a go. I ate all of them. This one is dedicated to all the youngsters out there because we all know there's a little kid inside of all of us and it is 
hot dogs. But not any kind of hot dogs. Special hot dogs. And of course, the first thing we're gonna need are some wieners. You can use any kind you like. I'm using the ones that my children love the most. And that's because they have some cheese inside. But any of them will work. The first thing you wanna do is to put them in skewers. Try to be as precise as possible and insert it right in the middle. But if you're a little bit off, it's not the end of the world. Now grab a paring knife and start cutting. And this is what you're trying to do. You're basically going all the way around until it hits the skewer. You're trying to make fun food here, so make sure you have some fun and go nice and slow. There is no reason to be fast. Now slowly and carefully spread them apart. The wider you can go, the better. Just keep in mind that if you push too much, they will break. For the dough, I'm gonna be using these pre-made biscuits. You can definitely make any kind of dough you like, but we're trying to make something fun and easy for the kids even to help you out. And even though these are pre-made, it tastes awesome. And if you've never seen them, check it out. This is what it looks like. You just gotta basically use your hand and spread them out as thin as possible. And if you do have children, encourage them to give you a hand because this is fun. As you could probably already tell, all you have to do is insert the dough through the wiener and your hot dogs are ready for the deep fryer. This is quick, easy, and a lot of fun to make and you should definitely give it a try with your children. And if you don't have kids, give it a try anyway because we all know there's a kid inside of all of us. Now it's time to move into the deep fryer. Talking about that, I set my oil to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Threw in the hot dogs in there and let it cook. You don't want to cook any hotter than that because if you do, the dough will not get cooked all the way through. And there's nothing worse than a nice crispy dough outside but the inside is raw. So as it was cooking, I made a quick sauce, which consists of only three ingredients. A little bit of mayo, ketchup, and mustard. It does not get any easier than that. Now all you have to do is mix it well and your sauce is done. By the time I was done with my sauce, so was my hot dogs. And these, my friends, are deep fried hot dogs. Hey, it is the same exact thing as a regular hot dog. You got the wiener and you got the bread. But to make it even better, it is deep fried. And let me tell you something, they don't only look fantastic, they smell fantastic. And the funny thing is that I made this with my kids and as I was showing through the camera, look at them on the background just taking it. They could not wait any longer and I don't blame them because there's no need for me to describe to you what these taste like. And one of the reasons I love cooking is to share it with my family and friends. And of course, if you love sauce, make sure you put it on. But if you don't, it is just as good. Give this one a try, your inner child is asking for it. Now let's move on to pork belly. And yes, we're gonna make chicharron style pork belly, aka the maximum crunch. And for that, we're gonna be needing pork belly. If you wanna make chicharron, you must have the skin on. But most importantly, try to look for one that has a lot of meat. If there's one thing pork belly always has is enough fat. The first thing I like to do is to start it by boiling some water. Then I threw in three bay leaves, followed by some peppercorn and a good amount of salt. Threw in my pork belly in there and let it cook all the way through. Depending on the size you have, you could take anywhere between one hour to four hours. The great thing about boiling at first is that it will make a nice crispy skin and most importantly, a tender piece of meat. Because from previous experiments, if you cook it this thick all the way through with deep fry it, it would not be that tender. And as we all know, tender is always better. Now the next thing I like to do is to put it on my refrigerator refrigerator so that it can dry up overnight. The very next day, this is what I got. That, my friends, is as dry as it gets. It is also exactly what you're looking for when you want to deep fry something to make it crispy. Talking about that, since it's fully cooked, all there's left to do is to put it in the deep fryer. So I set my deep fryer to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and threw it in there. The one thing you have to remember with pork belly is that a lot of oil will splatter up. Make sure you do it safely. I recommend using a splatter guard. This will not only keep your area clean, but most importantly, it will keep it safe. But after about 10 minutes on the deep fryer at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, it was time to take it off. And as you can see, the skin is starting to get nice and crispy. And also the edges are getting a nice crust. To finish it up, I cranked my oil to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you wanna throw it in there and fry it up until it's fully cooked. This is where the chicharrones are gonna come through. It will literally take anywhere between two minutes minutes to five minutes. To know exactly when it's ready is when it looks like this. Just make sure you do not burn it because that oil is hot. And here we have deep fried pork belly heaven. This right here is exactly what you're looking for. Crispy skin to the max. And even though it was deep fried, it is absolutely dry because none of the oil will penetrate the meat. And the best way to enjoy this is to have a nice beverage of your choice. And just in case you are wondering if it's crispy, check it out. That is crispy to the max. Of course, the first thing I gotta go for is the crispy skin. And I'll just let you hear this. Oh yes, my friends, that is fantastic. 
I know you had pork belly before and you know what it tastes like. Don't wait any longer, everybody. Go make yourself some deep fried pork belly. You deserve it. Moving on to the next one, we're gonna deep fry some delicious sea scallops. And here's what they look like raw. To make them is the easiest thing in the world. I just started by seasoning them with salt and freshly ground black pepper. To make them even better than they already are, I wrap them up in bacon. It is pretty simple and easy to do, you just gotta use some toothpick to secure it. And as you can see, by the time I was done, I have them nice and ready for the deep fryer. Talking about that, I set the oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Threw them in and let them cook because I was looking for an internal temperature of 145. As it was cooking, I made a nice simple sauce to go along with it. And I started by melting 2 tablespoons of butter. As soon as your butter starts to brown up just a little bit, it's time to add the other ingredients. So I threw in garlic paste, followed by parsley, some lemon juice, and heavy whipping cream. Now there's left to do is to mix all the ingredients together and your sauce is done. Now I'll tell you one thing, this sauce is fantastic to go along with any seafood. It is creamy, garlic, and most important, delicious. As you notice, I did not add salt or pepper because our scallop has plenty of flavor. And talking about that, by this time my scallops were ready. And that is exactly what I'm looking for, a nice golden brown color. And I'll tell you one thing, deep frying your scallops is 10 times better than cooking them in the oven. That will ensure that the bacon gets fully cooked without overcooking the scallops. And once I was done with all of them, here we have deep fried scallops. I mean, come on, take a look at that. Is there any possibility that this is not gonna be amazing? I don't think so. The great thing is that you can serve this as an appetizer or the main dish. And if you are wondering if they are fully cooked, look at this. Perfectly cooked to perfection including the bacon and the scallops. But obviously the most important thing is the taste because I can't wait any longer. And as I took my first bite, what? It is amazing. I'm talking about all the way up to the moon. It is sweet because of the scallops, smoky because of the bacon, and just overall a perfect combination. Of course, now we gotta go in with our sauce and see how that's gonna taste. And as I slice and took my first piece, oh, <laughs> it is phenomenal. Absolutely incredible. And like every sauce I'm making, more is always better. I think scallops were made to be deep fried. And if you've never had them, you should. Because as you can see, not even my family members could wait for me to finish filming it. And of course, we gotta cook some type of bird, but if you think that this is chicken, you are absolutely mistaken. This is a pheasant. If you are unfamiliar with it, you shouldn't. A lot of hunters know what this tastes like. And as you can see, this one was air chilled, which basically makes everything better. I've done a complete video explaining how that works, and you can check it out on the card above later on. But after I removed it from the packaging, this is what it looks like. Yep, I know what you're thinking. It looks like a chicken. And you're absolutely right. Let's just say a smaller chicken. To cook it in the deep fryer, I'm gonna treat it just like a regular chicken. And to me, buttermilk deep fried chicken is one of the best. So I started by throwing a good amount of buttermilk on the bow, followed by my favorite hot sauce. For the seasoning, I went with garlic powder and a good amount of salt. Now mix it well and your buttermilk marinade is ready. Throw the pheasant in there and make sure that you coat everything with the buttermilk. You can also do this directly in a Ziploc bag. But to make it easier for you to see, I'm using the bow. I covered it up and let it marinate in my refrigerator for four hours. For the seasoned flour, I started with all-purpose flour, followed by Guga's rub. Mix it all together and combine everything through and your seasoned flour is ready. Once the time was up, my pheasant was ready. You want to make sure to strain it as much as possible and throw it directly into the seasoned flour. And don't be shy, make sure you add as much as possible. Because as we all know, a nice crispy skin is the best thing to have on chicken. And I'm hoping that the pheasant is the same thing. And as you can see, by the time I was done, it was ready for the deep fryer. And for that, I set my oil to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Now here's a tip, if your oil start getting too hot, a good tip is this. Of course, first thing, turn off your heat. Then add more room temperature oil. This will immediately bring the temperature down. This is a good, easy, and effective way to bring the temperature down as fast as possible. Do everything you can to keep that heat at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the optimum temperature for a deep fried pheasant. Because once it reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit on the breast, this is what you're left with. A perfectly deep fried bird. That, my friends, is a deep fried pheasant. I'll tell you one thing, this thing is crispy to the max and I'm wondering if it's juicy inside so of course the first thing I gotta go for is always the dark meat and as I took the first leg out whoa that is as juicy as it gets I couldn't wait any longer I had to go in for my first bite and as I did what 
This tastes amazing. And here's the breast. Ooh, that looks juicy to me. There's nothing dry here. Of course, I gotta go in for a bite. And as I did, yep, it's just like chicken, but better. And I think I have a solution to make this even better. So I went ahead and threw in some of my favorite hot sauce. I mean, we all know that hot sauce and chicken were made for each other. And as I took my first bite with the hot sauce, forget it. I could tell you right now, this is the best chicken, aka pheasant, I ever had. That is all the meat I currently have in my house. I cooked everything, everybody. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Stay safe, keep cooking. If you keep cooking, I will. See you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.